Well, talk about coming out here to the stadium. I mean, it was a good crowd to watch. I mean, it kind of replicates the atmosphere of game day, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. It was a it was a normal practice for us. It wasn't a mock game today, but it was it was really good to be in here. First time we've been in here. The energy is a little bit different. You know, we talk about how important it is when we come in here. Things change a little bit. So I thought it was a good day. You'll do this one more time next Saturday, I believe. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a mock we'll game. We'll have a mock game. Yeah, sure we'll. We'll come out here and go through the whole pregame routine, the whole nine. Make it feel as much time. like a game as we can. We'll get the scouts divided up, and, and uh, we'll have a mock game. Um, have you settled on a starting quarterback? Uh, still working on it. Kind of 1A, 1B right now. I right. uh, feel like Lake we got. Tie. That's right. Yeah, and, and still feel like Airline can help us. Uh, certainly, uh, experiment with playing him at some slots. Some we got to get him on the field somewhere, uh, for him. And, and so, but but excited about that. It's been a good. You know, it's, that's what you want. You, you want to feel good about. You know, at least two, maybe three guys that can, you can go in and play with. And you know, the nature of the position is hard for those guys to stay healthy all year. So I like where we're at. And that doesn't really change anything as you lead up to the game here in the next two weeks because you're gonna you run two huddles anyway. Yeah, a lot of the time so we the, do. Yeah, the two yeah. guys, top two guys, are going to get the same amount of reps. No question. Yeah, and they, and they both need them, and so that's that's one of the advantages of being here. You know, we, we've got enough guys to, to field two scout teams, and we can we can get a ton of reps in practice, and and they certainly both need them. Are there any freshmen that have stood out to you? Do you feel like there's some leaves that you'll travel to Ireland, and maybe even guys that could play in that opener? Yeah, I think there's potentially three or four guys that that, that might make the trip. Uh, a couple of slot backs in particular. Um, Tyler Bradley, Gage Leonard, uh, both had really good camps, doing some good things on special teams. Uh, you know, Braxton uh, yeah. is showing some flashes. He's going to be a really good player, I think. Still learning the offense, but uh, I think his future is really bright. You know, those are three guys that kind of stand out to me right now. Um, has Nathan Kemp returned to practice? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Is there anyone you're concerned about that might not make it to the gate for the opener? Is there anybody? Have you, is, have you had a fairly healthy camp? We have. Yeah, you, you got your average soft bumps tissue things, bumps and bruises. We've had a pretty physical camp. Um, we've, we've got a lot of volume and player load in, and uh, but the kids have handled it really well. It's a credit to Coach Carici and the strength and conditioning staff. The guys came in in outstanding shape, and um, but yeah, we're, we're relatively healthy. Right, uh, at this and there's point. no one major that you're concerned about. Correct. Right. Um, so you're two, basically two weeks from now, two Saturdays yeah. from the today, you'll be playing mm -hmm. a game. Are you, where you feel you should be at this point? Well, I, I wish we were a little bit more consistent uh, right now. I think that's the thing that's holding us back a little bit. We're still a work in progress uh, on the offensive side of the football. Um, but I think you know now we shift entirely to our focus on Notre Dame. We certainly got some things to clean up. Uh, but our focus now is, is moving forward, and we got two weeks to get ready for them. And excited about the next two weeks. This is a little different dynamic than a normal season. Normally, a Navy would open with a lesser opponent. Um, and I mean, this kind of reminds of the 2020 when you had to play BYU right out of the gate. Yeah. It's rare to play arguably the, possibly the best team on your schedule yeah. right out of the gate because you, you usually make so much improvement from week one to week two. But it's it's both sides of the coin. They're, they're in the same position. Sure. I mean, what do you think of this dynamic of playing such a great team right yeah. off, out of the gate? You know, I'm excited about it. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for our players. Uh, and I think they're excited about it. And uh, we want to compete at the highest level we can. We, we want to play the, the best teams we can play, and that's what we're getting the first game of the year. So um, it is what it is. We're, you know, we're going to be ready to go. Scott? Do you think it helps with the players, too, knowing that they could possibly have the best team they're going to face all year right there, right out of the gate? Yeah, well, my hope is that we approach all games the same right. way, right? But certainly, you got Notre Dame on the schedule. That's a heightened sense of urgency in what we're doing. There's no doubt about it. What's impressed you in the body of work that Sam Hartman's had over his four years in college? He's, he's a winner. You know, he's won on a consistent basis. Uh, I think he's a tremendous leader, uh, and he's, he's a gamer. You know, he's a, he's a really good player. I think he's the complete package, and, and it sounds like he's gelled uh, with the other players there uh, at Notre Dame. And, uh, just a really good player. And I know you and Coach Volker kind of groove on that dynamic of, of mm. showing him something that he's never seen before. Yeah, and that's one of the things we try to do on defense is, is affect the quarterback with with what we do. And, uh, and we're certainly going to have to do that. You know, if, if, if he knows what we're doing, it's going to be a long day, right? But if we can keep him off balance a little bit, it certainly will help things. How's this team been stacking practices heading up to Notre Dame? Really good. You know, I'd say we, we've had maybe two days the entire camp that weren't what I wanted them to be. Um, but for the most part, I think we kind of get better every day. I think our kids have attacked camp and uh, had a great attitude. And, and, um, and we're, like I said, we're still a work in progress. We still have a lot to clean up. Still have a long way to go. Um, but I feel like in two weeks, 
you know, we'll, we'll be in a position where you know, we're going to have an opportunity to win that game. You talk about building on consistency. Do you like the focus that you've seen from your team in practice? I do. I do. And, you know, the way we practice is pretty intense. It's a fast-paced practice. If you're not focused and dialed in, all right, you're going to be in trouble. But uh, our kids have been dialed in. Like I said, it's been, it's been a really good camp. I'm encouraged by what I see. Um, and, you know, like I said, we, we're not quite where I want us to be yet, uh, but I feel good that we have two weeks to get there. How tough is this team? I think it's a tough football team. You know, these kids by nature are, are relatively tough, and, and we ask them to do some tough things. You know, and that's something we talk about all the time. And you've got to do hard things, right, if you're going to be a tough football team, and these guys have done that. Thanks. Yes, sir. Um, I noticed at the end of the practice you gave a lot of good reps to young guys. Is that, and I think I've seen that at other practices. Is yep. that, that's a departure from the past. Can you tell me your philosophy there? Yeah, well, I don't think it's a departure. You know, it's, it's parents weekend. Uh, you know, these, these uh, plebes have their parents on the stands. We want to make sure they got, got an opportunity to go out and play some. And so we we're able to get everybody some reps today. Um, the thing we did different, you know, at the beginning of campus year was we had some freshman only practices, which is great to get a little bit of head start with those guys. But uh, the, the plea class has been great. Uh, they're, they're bought in and, and they're working hard. And uh, as you guys know, it's, it's hard to play here as a freshman, you know, what we do and uh, to get indoctrinated into everything. And, and, but they've handled it really well. So, I mean, as you go through the season, will you take some period time of practice maybe at the very end to give young guys regular reps as opposed to them constantly being on the scout team? Certainly. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're a developmental program and that's really important that we do that you know we've got um, junior varsity games you know during our home games on Fridays and so we'll continue to develop those guys certainly well you're going to be playing a game two Saturdays from today where what would, how would you characterize the state of the offense at this point I think we've made a tremendous improvement particularly if you compare it to day one of the spring uh, I think we've made significant improvement I think we're still working to learn how to overcome ourselves on a rep in rep out basis you know uh, we got to do hard things and overcome those those circumstances. You know, it's like today it was a little hot, and I don't think we responded like we needed to on the front end of practice. And those those are things that you, you have to work through. You know, you have to do hard things and learn that you can overcome them. And and we're still growing in that area. I do believe we've made some significant strides in that area, but we're not there yet. And I think over the course of the next two weeks. You know, the heat is probably not going to be an issue in Ireland, Ireland but there's going to be other circumstances. Sure. And so our ability to overcome that, right, whatever that adversity is, and that's really the, the, the driving point or the, the core point for our offensive unit right now is, and we've been stressing this since we started uh, here, you know, back in the spring, is the most important play is the next play. Sure. I, I, I totally believe our guys are doing a much better job of embracing that um, and, and being positive. Uh, but it's also not letting any extenuating circumstance on the outside, you know, the peripheral of, of it, so to speak, impact our mindset. Because sure. when our guys have great energy and they're focused, just like several practices that occurred last week, they were really well, they were really good practices where we made substantial improvement in a day. Um, it all goes back to our mindset, you know, and, and where our heads are at. And when, our, when, when the young men on the offensive side of the ball are, are fired up and ready to go, we're pretty good, and we got a chance to be really good. But uh, again, we've got to continue to work on overcoming ourselves. Just talked to Coach Newberry. He described the quarterback situation as kind of 1A, 1B with Blake and Ty. Um, you've got two more weeks here. They're both be getting a lot of reps. You run two huddles in practice, so they'll both be getting equal reps. Uh, you think it'll sort itself out here in the next couple weeks? I do. I really do. I think it'll be very evident. Um, you know, I would expect to be playing two quarterbacks. Um, I don't mind saying that publicly right now. I feel like. Both of those guys are, are, are progressing in a, in a good direction, and I think at the moment they both can help our football team. Uh, you know, as far as who ultimately ends up starting, you know, we're still battling that out. And competition is is great; it brings out the best in all of us. Um, but I am pleased with both both of those young men and the progress that they've made. Um, but I think they fall in the category with the rest of the group. We still got a lot of work, and a lot of uh, improving to do over the next two weeks. So if you, maybe if I go by position, tell me maybe who comes to mind as somebody who's really stood out. Wide receiver. Is there anybody in particular that you feel has had a really strong well, camp and you thought you know that guy really brings it on a daily basis? On Barger. Jaden. Yep. Jaden is. Uh, you know he sets the standard without a doubt. He's an outstanding leader. Uh, every day he comes to work. Every rep. He does at an elite level with his effort and his focus. Um, it's awesome to have a senior like that, you know. And uh, so at wide receiver, he's, he's no doubt the, the standard setter. Um, I'm going to guess Fafana at fullback. There's no question. And Tesca is also that kind of guy, too. So we're very Alex. fortunate to have both, you know, Daba and Alex uh, at the same position um, that bring that same work ethic, that same mentality, 
of going to work every day to be your absolute best. So really pleased with those guys as well. Slot back? Uh, slot back, you know, I think you've got Amin who goes to work every day. Amin I've been, Hassan. Yeah, Amin Hassan, and uh, as well as Anton. Um, he has had a tremendous uh, second half. His, his second half of camp has been very good. I'm very pleased with him and excited about the direction he's heading. Um, and then Chapman has also had a good a good camp coming off an injury. Right. And then offensive line. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Connor has has had a good camp. McMahon. You know, yep. Connor McMahon's had a good camp. I think Brent Self has improved tremendously through this camp. Of course, with Lirion being out, it's given Brent ample reps to improve, and I think he has seized the moment and done a great job of, of getting better every day. Um, I think he is. He's, you know, created competition on the offensive line where we can find the best five and plug them in. I think he's helping us do that for sure. And then has there been any, like, surprises, maybe guys in this might not have been on the radar or not on the depth chart who have really jumped up and said, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a player? Well, relative to being a freshman, Braxton Woodson has been impressive. Yeah. Relative to being a freshman. He's not necessarily ready for prime time yet. But I, I, you know, but sooner rather than later, you feel like he's going to be able to help our team. Right. So he's been very impressive. How have the tight ends responded to yeah. their role? This is something yeah. that's uh, new for a lot of them in college football. Absolutely, they're great. You know, we when we're in our unit meetings, we try to bring a lot of energy, and and I joke that those guys are our hype squad. They always have the best attitude. They are the the best team guys we have. Man, they'll do whatever we ask them to do. Um, you know, they'll roll up their sleeves and, and do whatever dirty work they're asked to do and have a great attitude about it all. Uh, they recognize kind of their role right now. Of course, that at the tight, in the tight end room, we hope to evolve that to, you know, significantly over the course of the next year or two. Uh, but these guys, man, they're great team guys. They do whatever we ask them, and they have some strengths that we're going to be able to use, absolutely. And that comes from the top down from Coach Williams. Yeah, Coach Williams does a great job energizing those guys. He does a great job building relationship with his players, and, they're, and that's really feeding, feeding that room in a lot of ways. In your preparations for Notre Dame, what's impressed you about what you've seen from Al Golden's defense? Well, you know, they're very consistent, obviously very well coached. Um, you know, from a, a schematic standpoint, uh, they're very sound. Um, and so, you know, we're going to have to go to work very hard to be executing at a high level. Um, and then I, I think uh, personnel-wise, obviously, they're big and long. You know, they're Notre Dame. And so I think all those things, you know, come into play as we build out our game plan. And is that one of the biggest challenges is to try to replicate that big and longness in practice? Sure, fitness? sure, because, you know, we don't necessarily have six, seven defensive ends and things like that, which is the nature of it. Um, but I also think, you know, one of the key ingredients for us is how fast we play. You know, we talk about hat speed on the offensive line, you know, and then the execution piece obviously is critical, right? And it's going to be hard for them to emulate who we are on the scout team as well. And that's always got to play to our advantage. And how cool is it for you to be coaching against Notre Dame? I know the players sure. talk about the excitement of playing them. And what does sure. it mean to you to be able to have that opportunity? Well, no question. I mean, that's one of the things I've said about this opportunity here at the Naval Academy. This is a dream job for me. And, uh, and then part of that is to go play Notre Dame in Ireland, right? And, uh, you know, there have absolutely been those moments, particularly early on, back in the winter and the spring, where I just kind of looked at my life, wife and said, you know, I'm coaching at the Naval Academy, and, and our first game is Notre Dame, right? And it, it is a, kind of a surreal moment. But at the end of the day, we have a job to do. And just like I'm saying about our kids, I can't get caught up in the circumstance. You know, I have to go call plays and make sure our offense is well organized and executes at a high level, right? So um, while I'm sure I'll be aware of it, I think in order to do a great job, I have to be Zoom focused as well. Coach, you're uh, two weeks from playing the ball game. Uh, how would you characterize the state of the defense at this point? Yeah, I, th I think we're in a great spot right now. I think we're exactly where we need to be. We're not done yet uh, with what we have to get done. We're continuing to develop depth. Uh, really, as we get into the beginning of next week is when we'll start to, uh, as I'm sure Coach Newberry just told you, start to really dial in on, on the Irish and the things that they do and the things we think they'll do uh, against us. So we'll really have two game weeks as we start to prepare for those guys. But I think the guys have come out here with the, with the right mental approach, and obviously as coaches you're going to be on them uh, about every little detail. We're continuing to work on our attention to detail. Um, 
But having nine guys coming back uh, from, from last year really helps us uh, in terms of developing those things as we move forward and setting the tone for the rest of the young guys as we continue to grow as a defense. So kind of who have been some guys that have really stood out to you? Let's kind of maybe in the secondary. Anybody that just you feel has had a really consistent, solid camp and been a leader in the back? Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you really look at the entire back end and how they've, they've gone about their business and how they've gone about their work. Um, Ray Lane has played at a really high level. He's an eraser back there. Uh, he flies around, makes a lot of plays for us. Uh, and, and I think he really has embraced that role uh, on the back end. You look at a guy like Avon Gibbons uh, and Beattie Williams. Um, Duhart's been doing a great job for us, uh, as well as Elias Larry. And then getting Deshaun Peel back is a big deal for us. So I think Coach Green's done a great job uh, with the corner room and Coach Lewis uh, with the safety room and they've sort of branched that together and I think that's been a major piece of us growing as a defense is making sure that the safeties in the corners are in sync uh, with our teaching, how we do all that, how we do all the install, uh, how we do all the corrections and those guys really have created a great relationship and you see that through the players on the field as well. Well, um, outside linebackers, it looks like Jordan Sanders seems to get a lot of run at Raider, um, Xavier, and um, uh, Jackson at Stryker. I mean, how do you feel about the outside linebacker group? Yeah, I, I've been really excited about those guys. Obviously, you lose guys like John Marshall and Nick Straw. You got those gaps that you have to fill. Guys that played a lot of football for us. I think at Raider, uh, Jordan Sanders has really stepped up there. Uh, I think Luke Pierce has stepped up there. And, and I think Dylan Spilios is coming along really, really well as well. So I think uh, we've got three guys that, that, that are continuing to get better. And I, I, I've been impressed with Nazir Rogers at times as well over there. So we got really four guys there that we think we can, we can put in a game, uh, we can trust, we have confidence in. And, and I think they're just scratching the surface of the type of the player that we're going to be. Now they have to have really big weeks uh, the next two weeks in terms of developing and getting better for us. And then obviously at the striker position, uh, you know, you look at Xavier McDonald, he's a senior. Uh, he's really come on strong this fall camp. He's been a bright light of, of camp. Uh, just his attention to detail, his physicality, uh, his execution at an elite level. Uh, he's been, a, he's been a, a really bright spot of this camp and excited about him. So you have three returning defensive linemen, so I won't ask you much about because I know Busick and Clay Cromwell and Donald Bernie are probably all bringing it. They're consistent guys, they're proven guys. What about behind them? Who's showing you something on D-line of the backup group? Sure, it, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about those three guys up front, though. Okay. Uh, those guys really have set the tone for us defensively. You know, you've got those seniors up front that have played a ton of football, they're well coached, they play with extreme detail. I just showed a clip last night to the entire defense. Uh, obviously, we're in, uh, we were in spider pads yesterday doing, doing some uh, fit drill, and you, I, you saw all three defensive linemen locked out with their eyes in their gaps, their pad level's low, their helmet screws are below uh, the offensive line, and then they all work escape moves, basically in a half-speed drill. Uh, and, and just those guys showing that clip to the entire defense about how they go about their work regardless of it's full pads, full speed, or wearing helmets uh, in, in, in almost a walkthrough situation. I, I think they really set the tone for us defensively. You got Justin Reed up front. I mean, he, he's basically a starter. Right, he played a lot of minutes last year. You know, it, it, we've got a ton of depth up front. You got Landon Robinson, who's really developed and come along. Uh, you got Crane LaFond, uh, Justin Reed, like I talked about before. Uh, you got R.J. Davis, who, who's really coming along and playing at a high level as well. You got Tyler and Ryan. I think Coach Hall's done a great job recruiting that position, and I think he's done a great job developing the depth at that position. So we're not locked into just playing three guys the entire football game. We want to play harder than anybody in the country. So we got to train harder than anybody in the country. We understand when we're out there, you know, 60 snaps in a ball game, it's really hard to play at the elite level that we want to play at, especially at the defensive line. So we've got to be able to rotate guys, and we got to be able to trust guys and have confidence. And, and those guys are really, really uh, accepting and embracing the challenge and developing at a high level. What does it mean to have nine guys coming back who've experienced what it's like lining up against Notre Dame, especially when you're playing Notre Dame in that first game of the season? Yeah, I, I think experience is everything. You know, you, 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 you have a great idea from what you see at practice. You know, we talk about it. Practice reps are game reality. 
So you have a great idea, but it still is a little bit different at times when you get in the stadium and it's a, and I'm sure I'm going to watch the tape from today and we're in the stadium and there's a, you know, a few hundred people, a thousand people here, whatever it is. And, and guys get a little jarred up sometimes their first time in the stadium. So the more you've done that, the more it's become routine. You just sort of block all that other stuff out and you can focus on doing your job, doing your 111. And those guys have consistently done that. So to have nine guys that have been there, they've seen that, they've done that, and then go up against just a formidable opponent uh, as Notre Dame and really anybody that we play in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, it, it just gives you uh, a little peace of mind as you lay your head, head down at, at night. What's impressed you the most about the body of work of Sam Hartman and what he's done coming into this year? <laughs> uh, everything. I mean, you watch him on film, uh, whether it's Wake Forest film, whether it's Notre Dame film, uh, whether it's a, a clip that you see on online, on Twitter, on YouTube, anything like that. Um, is extremely impressive, really everything that he does. And then you read the articles about how he's uh, taken command of the program there, uh, which you would expect uh, from a guy that has had the accolades that he has. has. Uh, obviously, we talk about the, the Notre Dame being a formidable opponent. You know, obviously the quarterback uh, is the most important position on the field, and they have a great one. You've schemed against teams to start a season off that haven't had the same coordinators on offense. How difficult is that when you're scheming against a team that it's another season for a team, but also a team with a different coordinator? Yeah, it's it's a challenge every year, even when they have the same coordinator. And then when you have a new coordinator, it's uh, I'd be lying if I tell you it wasn't more of a challenge. You know, you got to chase a lot of things. Uh, you got to really dot your T's and cross your I's. You got to find any little uh, tidbit that you can find to. Uh, uh, help your key unlock the door, uh, if you know what I mean, in terms of that. How cool is it for you guys coming up with something that you know maybe down the road in this game that Notre Dame's never seen before? Well, you know, we're, we're going to try our best. You know, Coach Newberry's the, the, the world's best at that. Uh, so I know he's going to have a couple things up his sleeve that uh, we'll try to spring on those guys on the 26th. And I'm sure you do too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Take care.